Well, right, you remember that Omar Matini was the fellow behind that Orlando nightclub shooting that claimed nearly 50 lives, uh, and we had uh, so many dozens of others injured. Uh, well, now a lawyer representing some of the victims' families have come out uh, suing Twitter, Facebook, and Google for providing material support, indeed, the impetus and even inspiration to let him do what he did. Uh, with us right now, uh, the fellow behind that suit, the man representing these Pulse families, the Dix Defect world of this went down, Keith Altman. Keith, thanks uh, for coming. Thanks for having me, Neil. How are you? I'm fine. Um, the gist of this suit, if I hear it correctly, is that Twitter, Facebook, Google through YouTube provided the means to inspire and then elevate the attacker's attack, right? That's, co that's correct, Neil. At my firm, 1-800-LAW-FIRM, we've been looking at this issue for quite some time. These sites provide material support to ISIS by allowing them to use their sites as an instrument to conduct terrorist operations, to raise money, to recruit, and to radicalize individuals. And that's the one of the stated purposes of ISIS, which is exactly what happened here with Omar Mateen. Did they raise the money on the site itself? In other words, did, did the team then use this or communicate through these sites, in this case with ISIS? Well, there's, there's controversial evidence in terms of exactly what his relationship was. What is not controversial is that he reviewed information on the websites and that it appears that he was radicalized in part. But the, the whole claim is not based on the direct relationship between Google, Facebook, and Twitter and the Orlando shootings, is that they provide material support to ISIS, and since ISIS stated goal was to recruit and radicalize people like Mateen, that makes these companies liable. So there's, there, it doesn't have to be a direct connection, but a relationship. Um, but that could be a stretch, right? I mean, it, you could be saying the same of uh, uh, game makers like uh, Xbox or PlayStation that have particularly violent games would inspire violent behavior later on in kids who are predisposed to that. Is that, is that fair? Not, and not at all. That's not even what we're saying. One of ISIS's absolute stated purposes is to recruit and radicalize. They then use these tools to do so. These companies know that their tools are being used for this purpose, and there are things that these companies can do to help lessen the ability of ISIS to use their tools. That's the connection. An Xbox game, I don't think anybody would argue that it was the intention of the creator to make people go out and commit violence. But how, so do you, how do you draw the line at just Xing out um, ISIS operatives or anything that comes from ISIS, even in a third party way, over a site without, without screening that site and even censoring that site? Isn't that what these guys are afraid this leads to? Well, first of all, these companies do censor as they see fit. There is no First Amendment right to post things on these sites. So censorship is there as they see fit. By putting that aside, one of the important distinctions here is that these companies are creating new content. They claim we're not responsible for what's been posted. But what they ignore is the following. There is an ISIS posting. There's a viewer who's looking at the ISIS posting. Based on put what they know about me as the viewer and what I'm looking at, these companies have algorithms that target an ad to me. Well, when they do that, when they take the posting and me and the targeted ad and they put them all together in the same place at the same time, they are creating new content. They're not just simply passing through uh, the information that, that somebody else had provided to them, and, and they want to try to escape responsibility for that. So what you have here is a situation where these companies are profiting from this targeted advertising, and at least in some cases, it appears that they are sharing She's referring revenue. to the advertising itself, not to the fact that, uh, you know, an ISIS sympathizer so they might be communicating or socializing on, let's say, Facebook. Well, the other problem that, would, that, that would, goes that's along... That's a very big difference, right? There is, a, there is a difference, but there are certain behaviors that are indicative of nefarious activity. These companies promote, we've taken down hundreds of thousands of accounts. Well, that's weed whacking. It's like going out, you go out to your lawn, you take the weed whacker out, cut the tops of all the dandelions, and the next day you've got a bunch of dandelions. You have to get at the roots. And what you see here, and this is very clearly pointed out in the complaint, there was an individual at Drift on 146. He had been taken down 145 times before that. And the next day he just comes up with Drift on 146, Drift on 147. But what that if he was already a nut, Keith? You know, you know, you talk about life has not been easy for me. My whole family, this was Juan Guerrero talking uh, about... Uh, the father of, of one of the victims, and yet that this guy, Mantine, was also on the site talking about my life has not been easy. 
dealing with prejudice that I've encountered and, it, and how that gets elevated when it's apparently emboldened by a terrorist group when he's already a nutcase. You know what I mean? He's, he's already crazy. So why, so why pour fuel onto the fire? It's like the old eggshell defense. You know, people come as they come. The point is, this but is not about... But others have been exposed to the same materials. Believe me, I'm not condoning it. But others have been privy to the same material. Other nutcases, other uh, lone wolves, if you will, who have not been affected by that. They just are just crazy, and it's not that that has taken them to the next step where they attack. That's true, but that doesn't mean that these companies should not do what they can reasonably do to prevent ISIS from using their sites as an instrument to conduct operations. That's all we're asking for. You and I are held to a reasonable standard. We're supposed to do reasonable things. These companies have hid behind Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act claiming we're not responsible for anything that goes on our, <clears throat> excuse me, anything that goes on our site. We can act recklessly and there's nothing you can do about right, but it. But this guy, was, simply, it's fair to say he was radicalized, it seemed, in many, already. Maybe more so after being on Google or Facebook or Twitter, what have you. Are you arguing that those sites tipped it to the crazy, murderous guy he became? What we're saying is that it contributed in part to his actions on that day. Uh, whether it was the sole cause or a partial, you know, contributed, that's something that will be found out down the road. And we're going to have to take a look at the entire situation. Right. But yes, it could contribute, and people have responsibility. I mean, this is just simply saying to these companies, do what you can reasonably do. After they've done what they can reasonably do, then we can get down to the nitty-gritty details of whether uh, he would have done this anyway or not. But we Understood. don't even get there because these companies just stand back and say, it's not our problem. We have a get-out-of-jail-free card. And I think it's unacceptable that these companies should just simply hide behind this Section 230, not do anything, and endanger the lives of Americans when they could do some things that could All substantially right. mitigate. Keith Altman, watch them closely. It's a fascinating legal argument as well. Uh, Keith Altman, the man uh, leading this charge. We have a lot more after this.